What's up everyone, it's Kadi with MoneyVest. So in this video, I wanted to discuss both Apple and Google stock, kind of combine both of these companies in one video and go over the fundamental analysis on both of these stocks and also calculate the intrinsic value of these two businesses. As always, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. And again, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. Of course, getting access to all the members-only private videos, including all the Excel spreadsheets, which are going to be transforming over to our moneyvest.com website here fairly soon. And of course, have access to our Discord with trade alerts and trade ideas, as well as our newsletters. So link's going to be down below. And also do connect with me on Instagram. My handle is going to be CassWRP, and I'd love to connect with you over there also. So... Uh, moving over to what's been going on, uh, both of these companies have actually been selling off quite aggressively. I mean, Apple, for example, is down another 1.9, almost 2% pre-market. It was down 2.5% yesterday. There's been about a $2 billion fine from European Union on the violation of some antitrust regulations from Apple. And uh, again, there was some concerns over the sales of iPhones in China and how Huawei is getting market share. Google, on the other hand, is also starting to break down. There's been some speculation around Sundar Pichai's um, CEO, sort of whether he's going to retain his position or not, whether he's going to get fired or resign because of the chat GBT and, of course, generative AI opportunities and the risk that carries um, with, with the generative AI and how that's going to impact advertising revenues as well. So both of these companies have actually been tumbling down 14 and a half, almost 15 percent sell off in Google here more recently from its recent highs and Apple from its all time highs also down a little bit over 13, almost 14 percent. Now, I'm here to tell you is that oftentimes the market tends to overreact on a lot of these issues uh, when it comes to big tech because a $2 billion fine for Apple is quite literally chunk change. It, it does not affect Google's balance sheet. It does not affect Google's revenue whatsoever. Yes, there's going to be some regulatory impact with respect to the changes being made in EU that may affect Google's App Store uh, you know, policies and what they actually end up doing. But when it comes to the material impact of the revenue side of things or the balance sheet or the cash fine, it's close to nothing because Apple is one of the richest companies in the world with a balance sheet that swelled up to hundreds of billions of dollars. So $2 billion fine is quite meaningless. Yes, there is some concerns for the... Uh for the lack of sales over in China. So if you come over here, uh, Apple iPhone sales in China fall as Huawei gains market share. So sales in China fell in the first six weeks of the year, hurt by strong competition and pricing pressures. This is new data and Apple iPhone sales slumped 24% on the year, pushing the US tech giant to fourth place in share sales uh, in the world's largest smartphone market in China. And sales of Chinese rival Huawei rose 64% on year driven higher by demand for its Mate 60 series. And Huawei took second place with a 17% market share. That's up from 9% year over year. Vivo is another Chinese competitor, took the top spot for market share, uh, is what the data also showed. Now, this is a little bit more concerning piece than as opposed to the $2 billion fine. And of course, Google here also slumping uh, on the back of this controversy over AI-powered chat GBT chatbot um, as well. Now, what I will what I will tell you is that both these stocks are some of the best, most innovative companies in the world, as we already know. Uh, this can, and in my opinion, is very much of an overreaction from these two catalysts selling off Apple down 14, Google down 14. Now, valuation has always been a bit of a concern for me for both Apple and Google. And for those reasons, my fair values have obviously been a lot lower. And that's exactly what we're here to discuss. So if you come over to, let's say, Apple and go over to earnings expectations for this company over the, let's say, next five to 10 years. So if you come down, earnings expectations are 656. That's going to be about a 7% growth year for Apple um, this year. So let me just come over to uh, this uh, platform here, and we're going to type in, let's say, 656 in 2024, and we're going to plug in 1077 by 2028. So 1077, we're looking at a uh, 20, 13% uh, growth here for the company over the long term, right? So 13% growth is what we're expecting. Uh, net income, so if you come down here on financials, if you come down to net income, we're looking at a net income of just under $97 billion. So if you do a five-year discounted earnings model, so if you plug in Apple, we type in $97 billion, and we apply a 13% growth rate with a fair value of, let's say, 2025, which is on average quite reasonable for Apple, 12% discount rate, 10% margin of safety, and minus 4 to 5% share dilution. We're looking at 152 as the fair value, as the intrinsic value 
for Apple, which is where exactly I would be a lot more aggressive for the company. Even at 165, I wouldn't mind dollar cost averaging a little bit. So if you come over to the technical analysis, what you'll notice is that Apple has got a very strong support at around 165. And that's exactly what we were expecting. This right here was the potential breakdown we were expecting for Apple here, below $180. So seeing that consistent move to the downside, 165, like I said, is going to be that next support level to watch for Apple kind of in line with that previous support here. So that is going to be that next target and that next support resistance all the way up to 190 to as much as $198. So lots of consolidation sideways, of course, reading in this downtrending channel and finally seeing a bigger breakdown. So 165 is going to be that support. And like I said, my fair value is going to be sitting closer to 152. Now coming over to Google and Google is also no different. Google for me uh, in the 120s has always kind of made more sense. So if you come over to the net, net income, 73 0.74 so let's just plug in 73795 and we're going to type in google over here by the way all these financial models are going to be available on our website including the reverse discounted cash flow the discounted cash flow and the discounted earnings model so all of these are going to be available for everyone on moneyvest.com so link's going to be down below if you want to join and get access to the website when we do indeed launch here in the next few weeks uh to at least uh, about a month depending on dev time 677 is the earnings per share uh, and if we plug that in over here, so 676, I believe, 677, and then 1523. So 1523, and this is also 2029 number. Uh, so we're looking at a growth rate of about at least 17%, right? 17% growth rate for Google. Let's just go a bit more conservative. Let's just go with 15% growth. And uh, let's just go with about 20 times P multiple, 12% discount rate, 10% margin of safety, minus, let's say, 2.5% share buyback. It's not as aggressive as apple and we're looking at 138 and right now i believe google might be actually trading below that level 133 so we are actually quite uh considerably decent um in terms of the valuation here one could argue that app that google is indeed undervalued uh, but if you go let's say 14 percent growth rate with slightly lower p multiple then we're looking in the 120s and this is where i'm most comfortable with <clears throat> because i don't want to go with the most optimistic sort of assumption and turn out to be wrong. I want to be go with the most conservative assumption and then turn out to be right. So 120s, 119s, 120s is going to be ideal. And it's going to be a level sitting right over here um, inside this green rectangle would be the perfect, perfect price to be dollar cost averaging into Google for the long term. And a lot of this right now, at least in my opinion, seems to be um, a lot of the overreaction from the market based on these catalysts. So next support, next technical support is going to be 126 all the way down to 117, a much stronger, much better support level to watch for Google. And this would be a no-brainer buy price for me at those levels. And for Apple, a no-brainer buy is going to be closer to 150s. Again, the lower the better. And ideally, 120s and 130s would be just chef's kiss, in my opinion, for those two stocks here, for those prices. So hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do connect with me on Instagram. My handle is going to be castwrp. Join our Discord, join our Patreon. We'd love to have you on board. And again, you can access all the members-only private videos, including all the Discord channels uh, and the trade alerts and trade ideas and the moneyvest.com website here very soon also. Uh, link's going to be down below for everything. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you all in the next video. Happy investing.